On the eve of the US election, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are sweeping through a total of five states between them. President Trump is visiting North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan, while Joe Biden campaigns in Pennsylvania and Ohio, all battleground states. In the dying days of the campaign, the president has criticised a Supreme Court decision to allow more time for ballots to be received and counted. That's fuelled more uncertainty about how the election result could play out. Well, joining us now from Wilmington, Delaware, is CNN's Camilla Burnell, who is covering Biden's last push on the campaign trail. Thanks for joining us, Camilla. So can you tell us, what is Joe Biden's last-minute sales pitch? Well, look, uh, these are the last minutes where they're asking voters to come out and vote. And this is crucial for the Biden campaign, and I would argue also for the Trump campaign. We've had an amazing amount of people voting early. We're talking more than 96 million people who have already voted in this country, and we're still not to the election day. And so it is incredible to see that about 73 percent of the total number of votes that were cast in 2016 have already been casted. And so that is really the focus to get people out to vote even on election day, despite the high numbers of early voters, because both of these campaigns are anxious. They're nervous and they know this is crunch time. They know this is the last opportunity that they have. And then you're seeing both of these candidates handle this very very differently. Uh, the Biden team, you're seeing them, of course, focused on the pandemic. They're socially distanced. They're wearing masks. They're holding these rallies where people are driving in. So they're in their cars. Uh, they're using celebrities. So today we saw uh, Lady Gaga with uh, Biden. And then we saw John Legend with Kamala Harris. They're specifically focused in Pennsylvania, even though the former vice president did start his day in Ohio, the focus of the night has been Pennsylvania, 20 electoral college votes. And whoever wins that state could have an easier path to that 270 number. And so you're seeing both of these campaigns really focused on Pennsylvania, focused on Michigan, focused on Wisconsin. That is the so-called blue wall that used to be blue and that President Trump was able to flip in 2016. And so you're seeing that as one of the big focuses of the night and that you'll see also tomorrow all eyes on these states and on many of the battleground states like North Carolina, like Florida, and again, Pennsylvania. So a really uh, intense last couple of hours for both campaigns. And the president is still out there in his final event. Joe Biden uh, has finished for the night. And so, of course, and now it all will uh, essentially end up on what will happen tomorrow and the voters who will really have that final say. Camilla, you can't mention Lady Gaga and Joe Biden in the same sentence and not give us a few more details. So <laughs> so what, what actually unfolded? And when you say people are obviously driving up to these rallies at Joe Biden's, what, what's kind of the vibe there? Look, people are excited. I think uh, that the focus in the Biden campaign, even before the pandemic, was Beating Donald Trump, and it was decency, and it was sort of getting back normalcy and the soul of the country. And as as you had been hearing Joe Biden say, was rebuilding the backbone of the United States. And so you're seeing people wanting to return back to normal. You're seeing people in these rallies really focused on leadership and leadership when it comes to the pandemic. And you're seeing a lot of energy because, as you mentioned, uh, Lady Gaga, of course, being someone who is well well-known among millennials, among so many voters that uh, that Biden specifically wants to attract. So you're seeing her perform uh, during these events with him, and you're seeing her also asking people and asking her supporters as well to back Biden and to go out and vote. So she was even wearing one of those masks that said vote. And so you're really just seeing that push on getting people out to vote because election day turnout is going to be crucial when it comes to Trump and when it comes to Biden, because even though so many people have already voted, it is going to be all decided tomorrow and they need people to turn out to vote. OK, so President Trump has also been out there campaigning hard in the final hours and there's been a couple of legal battles lost by the Republicans um, in respect of voting eligibility. How's he reacted to that? 
Well, look, first, let's talk about those court battles. And I first want to talk about one uh, that will likely benefit the president. And the Supreme Court in Wisconsin decided that only ballots received by Election Day will be counted. So that is uh, one of those legal battles that the president and his supporters are celebrating tonight. But there are two other ones uh, that are not necessarily favoring the GOP. And specifically, the one in Pennsylvania is the one that Trump has been commenting about. And what happened in Pennsylvania is that the Supreme Court upheld a lower court's ruling that basically will allow mail-in ballots to be received up to three days after the election so they can be counted later. And so that means that there could be a lot of votes uh, that are still not counted by the time we finish looking at all of this tomorrow night. And so the president took to Twitter and started essentially a conversation where he says that the decision for voting in Pennsylvania is a very dangerous one. He says uh, it will allow unchecked cheating, in his words, and determine and undermine uh, the laws of the system. He also said that this could induce violence in the streets and that something must be done. But it is really important to clarify here that it is legal. Uh, this is something that has been done and that the court has upheld now. They will be counting votes after the election, and that is normal specifically in the state of Pennsylvania, because they do not count those votes ahead. And so that is an important ruling when it comes to such a key state, a state that both of these candidates are fighting for. And then lastly, I do want to touch on Texas, because the ruling there is also very important. It was not by the Supreme Court, but it is a federal judge. And this federal judge rejected a GOP attempt to toss out 127 thousand ballots in Texas. And these were drive-in ballots. So the key here is the drive-in ballots. And they have already appealed because here is what the federal judge in Texas said. He said if it were election day and he was ruling about election day in particular, he would have ruled differently because what he says is that the state of Texas, the laws there say that voting needs to be done inside of a building. And so when you drive in and vote, uh, this he says, like a tent, for example, would not be considered a building. So this is something that is going to be crucial when it comes to Election Day in Harris County. This is a Democratic county in Texas where they believe the votes will go uh, in a majority to Joe Biden. And so this is one where uh, supporters of Joe Biden are specifically asking people not to do this on Election Day, but also hoping that this will be upheld and that these thousands of ballots will not be tossed out because, of course, they believe that that could give Biden uh, some sort of hope in the state of Texas. Camilla, we are seeing pictures here in New Zealand of the fence outside the White House being boarded up and talk of police in Chicago and New York on alert. What are expectations post-election? It's hard to say, and it is difficult to say because the president in particular is saying, or our sources have been telling us, uh, that the president might not be ready uh, to say that he lost. He wants to essentially declare a victory, even if uh, the results are not in by the end of the night. And so that could cause protests. But on the other side, you can also see protests if the president wins. So you're seeing uh, the White House essentially put up those fences that they have been using during the George Floyd protests and during the Black Lives Matter protests. Those have already been put up around the White House so that protesters cannot get near uh, the White House. But you're also seeing businesses in all over the United States boarding up their windows so that you don't have any sort of violent protests that will end up in looting or in fires. And I think the country and everybody is just nervous and on edge about what will happen and how people will react. This is a very emotional election. People are very invested and they're invested in both sides of the aisle. So you could have any sort of outcome here and you could see protests. And I think both the White House and businesses around the country are just getting ready so that things don't end up in a place where they lose their business or uh, they have confrontations with police.
Appreciate your time this evening. That's Carmela Bernal, who is on the ground in Wilmington, Delaware. She's been following Joe Biden's last hours of campaigning before uh, Election Day tomorrow.